Hello, welcome to the Math 135 video for the strategy for related rates. The intensity of this video is mild. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to break down a related rates problem into steps. Our motivation is that related rates problems can be confusing. So what are some general strategies for solving them? Here's the main example that we're going to use throughout this video. I'll read it for you now. So Xavier and Yolanda start at the origin. Xavier runs along the x-axis and Yolanda runs along the y-axis. After 10 seconds, Xavier is 20 meters away from the origin, running at 5 meters per second, and Yolanda is 30 meters away from the origin, running at 2 meters per second. At this moment, how quickly is the area of the rectangle formed by the origin, Xavier, and Yolanda growing? So this brings us to our first step of solving a related rates problem, which is read the problem carefully. And one thing that we can look for are words like how quickly or how slowly, or rate of change, which will signal to us that this is a question about derivatives. So take a moment right now to read through the problem again. Once we've read through the problem, Let's see what sorts of things we can identify about it. This process is informal, and we're really just trying to get a sense of what the question is trying to tell us. So we read this sentence at this moment, and we think about what is it actually talking about? Well, there's a certain situation that's happening. There's some runners, and we care about one particular moment of their running. Which moment does that refer to? It refers to after 10 seconds, some stuff happens. Okay, what else can we see? Here we see the words how quickly and growing. So we expect that this is some, a question about derivatives and about rates of change. We see that there's going to be a rectangle involved and specifically the area of the rectangle. And then we've got some other information about this rectangle, such as how you exactly form it. We're gonna ignore this data for now, but we can see that if we had to compute, have to, had to model the rectangle, we could use this information to do it. What else do we have in the problem? Well, there's some specific data about uh, specific numbers for what's happening after 10 seconds. So there's some data about distances and velocities. We'll come back to that a bit later. So this is what I do when I, when I read a related rates problem. I try to understand what, are the, what is it trying to tell me, uh, and how do the various things relate to each other, and how do I know it's about derivatives? The second step is to create a model of the situation. So what this means is what geometry or shapes are useful here. So the, the shape that you use to describe a problem is called a model. If the problem is not geometric, well, you won't have a shape as your model. Um, but oftentimes in first year calculus problems, there will be some geometry involved. In our question, this is going to be about areas of rectangles. Also, your model should uh, involve drawing a picture and labeling your variables. So let's do that now. So we see that there's going to be some stuff about how to construct your rectangle, and we'll use that information to actually make our model and we'll label various things that are relevant, such as the position of Xavier and the position of Yolanda. So Xavier is running along the x-axis and his position depends on time. So we'll write his position as x of t and he's running along the x-axis. What about Yolanda? She's running along the y-axis. Her position also depends on t so we'll call this y of t. I think x of t and y of t are reasonable things to call them. Now, how does the area of the rectangle show up here? What is, where is the rectangle? Well, it's the one formed by Xavier, Yolanda, and the origin. So we can draw that in as well, and this is a of t. All right, there's our model. We understand what exactly is happening here. Xavier is moving in the x direction, Yolanda is moving in the y direction, and the area of the rectangle is changing. 
Once we've done that, now we need to actually relate the variables in the problem. So you should ask yourself, do you know any ways to relate the variables? Oftentimes this will be associated with areas or volume formulas. So what should it be in our particular case? Well, it's the area of a given rectangle. And from your picture, from your model, you should be able to say what the area formula is and how it relates to x of t and y of t. In this, in this case, it's the simple, the area is uh, x of t times y of t, sort of the simplest possible geometry we could have. All right, now that our variables are related, let's move on to the next step. Now we want to sort things into wants and haves. So what is it that we actually want in this problem? Use the labels and notations you've already defined. So what do we want in this problem? Well, if we read our question, it says after 10 seconds, at this moment, how quickly is the area of the rectangle growing? How can we express that in terms of A, X, and Y? Well, what we're looking for is the derivative of the area, the rate of change of the area, at 10 seconds. So we take that and we express it algebraically if we can. We want the rate of change of A at 10 seconds. Now let's look at what we have. So we know that Xavier is 20 meters away from the origin and running at 5 meters per second at this given time. Can you express this in terms of x of t and x prime of t? What does this information tell you? Well, the first information tells you that at 10 seconds, his position is 20 meters. So we get this first one. And his velocity is 5 meters per second, which corresponds to the derivative of his position. So at 10 seconds, x prime of t is 5 meters per second. Can you tell me what this information says about Yolanda's function? Well, at 10 seconds, her position is 30 meters and her rate of change, her speed, is two meters per second. So we've extracted what we have from the question. Also, while we're at it, let's write down the formula that we, we figured out that relates the variables x of t and y of t. Great, so now we know what we want and we know what we have. So the question is, how do we actually get a prime of 10? Here's the step where we differentiate. So this will often use the chain rule or implicit differentiation. So from our formula a of t equals x of t, y of t, we take the derivative of both sides and this will end up using the product rule in this case we get something like this. All right, once we've differentiated, now we look at what our want is, it's a prime of 10. So the next step is to actually compute the thing you want. So let's figure out a prime of 10. This means plugging in 10, and we have all of this information, we've written it in our halves, so by plugging in the individual values and then computing it, we'll get 190 meters squared per second. So that's the answer to our question. So the final stage for us is to actually answer the question and do any sanity checks that are necessary. So you should always give your answer in a complete sentence without using jargon or notation that you invented for the solution. So even though we used the functions x of t and y of t, they don't show up anywhere in the question of the statement. So we should express our answer in ways that are simple and don't use this extra notation. For example, you might write, at t equals 10 seconds, the area of the rectangle is growing at 190 meters squared per second. Now you can apply some sanity checks. So you might ask, is your answer in the correct units? Does it have the right sign? Does it make physical sense? So here we look at meters squared per second. Do we expect that to be the rate of change of area? Yep. 
Does it have the right sign? Did we expect this answer to be positive or negative? Well, the thing was growing, so we expected it to be positive. And does this make physical sense? Well, it's a little bit hard to tell because it's not so clear whether this answer is very right or very wrong. But if this answer was like a million meters squared per second, then maybe we would be a little bit uh, suspicious because a million seems kind of wrong here given the, the setting. So this third one is the least easy to use, but it's always worth asking. To summarize the strategy, you should first read the problem carefully, then draw a picture and label it. Relate the variables you have, sort into wants and haves, differentiate, compute whatever it is you want, and then answer the question and apply sanity checks. Let's end with some other exercises. Repeat the same question that we just did, but this time use the triangle formed by Xavier Yolanda in the origin, not the rectangle. Second exercise is to do the same question, but use the ellipse that's centered at the origin, whose rightmost point is Xavier, and whose uppermost point is Yolanda. And then a sample test question would be, a spherical balloon is shrinking with time. Find the rate at which the radius is shrinking at the moment when the volume of the sphere is 10 centimeters cubed and dv dt is minus 2 centimeters cubed per second. And to help you out, the answer is around 0.09 centimeters per second. Let's end with some reflection. How early in the process of related rates problem do you differentiate? How early in the process of related rates problem do you plug in the numbers? And how early in the process of a related rates problem do you find a general formula that relates all the variables? Thank you very much, and have a great day.